So uh, hopefully you've come to us from the previous video where we looked at this uh, rod under torsion uh, and we solved for its reactions uh, and we went on to do its torque force diagram using a deliberate method of sections. Uh, so if you haven't, there's a, a card up here. You can follow it back. That's going to take you to uh, r really the starting point of all of this because this one is going to be a, a down and dirty quick uh, generation of the torque force diagram using a graphical method. So we had already solved for the reactions uh, and done the free body diagram and everything in the previous video. I'm not going to redo it. It's where we're starting off. Uh, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to build directly my torque force diagram from the free body diagram. So the only quirk, uh, slightly different than what we were doing when we were doing uh, normal forces and axial force diagrams, is to make our sign convention work. So, you know, if we look at the torque at A, it's positive and it's uh, going to be 80 newton meters. But when we did our method of sections, of course, we ended up with a negative internal torque. And of course, the torque force diagram is a graph of the internal torques. And so we're going to have to flip our signs knowing that what we're doing is equal and opposite internal. So if we have a positive 80 newton meters happening at A, we know that that's going to push our torque force diagram down. And so we're going to start by pushing it down to negative 80. And there's no torques between A and B, so we can just draw a constant across between A and B, at which point we come to point B where there is 150 newton meter negative torque applied. And so it's going left or negative, and we're flipping our sign. I, I, I won't come back to that too often. And, and so that's going to push our torque force diagram up 150. So we take the negative 80, we add 150 to it, and it brings us up to a value of positive 70. Again, constant torque between B and C because there's no external torques applied. We get to the 60. It's going to the right, so it's going to pull us down or subtract from that. So 70 minus 60 brings us down to 10. We get to 10, we're constant across, and of course we get to the final one. The 10 brings us down to zero, it closes, we have equilibrium, and so we're happy. And so in just a matter of seconds, we were able to generate the internal torque force diagram for this section. Uh, using this graphical method, if you will. So again, a really powerful tool because let's face it, what we really want to do is get on with solving for our internal stresses and our deformations associated with shear stress uh, as a result of the torsion. So we don't want to spend a lot of time doing unnecessary uh, partial free body diagrams unless we have to. If, we, if it's a complicated system, we probably will have to do that. But in a very simple system like this, we can get there using the graphical method. So I throw it out there as a tool that you might want to use. Uh, if not, if you're a little less comfortable with it, you might want to use uh, the de more deliberate method. Uh, but either way, you've got a couple tools in your toolbox and you're ready to move on and start looking at stresses resulting from torsion.